Hello and welcome to our fifth tutorial based on the topics presented at IB Experts Firebird School held by Holger Klemt and Jason Chapman as part of the International Firebird Conference 2007. In this two-part tutorial, we'd like to show you how to create a Firebird database and introduce you to the main database building blocks. To begin, we'd like to offer a brief introduction to data model development. If you have absolutely no previous experience in database development, we recommend you first read our brief introduction to database normalization, found in the online documentation at www.ibexpert.com. Search Database Design and Database Normalization. The aim of database normalization is to reduce redundant information. For example, if you store your customer address data in your customer table, and your supplier address data in your supplier table, you may end up with double entries. A supplier can also be a customer, and a single customer may have more than one address. So create an address table with relationships to the customer and supplier tables. Using views, the end user sees his customer, customer number and address, or supplier, supplier number and his address. Before you start, you need to make a few rules and stick to them. A data model consists of tables, fields, keys, and relations. The relationship between the tables is defined by keys. There are a few rules which you should keep in the back of your mind when developing your data model, and these rules should be clearly defined and rigorously kept to, particularly when working in a team. Our rules for simplification are as follows. Naming conventions. You need to develop a naming convention that enables you and others to find and identify keys, table fields, procedures, triggers, etc. simply and quickly using a simple but effective combination of table names, field names, keys and relationships. Please name things simply and logically. Call a spade a spade and not a manual excavation device or a portable digging implement. Another decision to be made is whether to name things in the singular or plural. If you have a team developing the same database, you are bound to have conflicts here and maybe even duplicates. For example, customer and customers, if you don't make a decision before you start. As the singular form is shorter than the plural in most languages, this is recommended, i.e. customer instead of customers, order line instead of order lines, and so on. Please note that in the DB1 database, order had to be named orders, because order is a Firebird keyword. The table could still be named order, but would have to be defined in inverted commas, which could lead to other problems later on. So English language developers need to be aware of Firebird keywords and avoid eventual conflicts. Another tip is to avoid using the dollar sign in your database object names, as dollar is always used in system object names. All Firebird and interbase system objects begin with RDB dollar, and MON$, and IB Expert System objects begin with IBE$. Primary keys are easily recognisable if the field name has the prefix PK or ID, followed by a reference to the table name. Foreign keys should logically then contain the prefix FK, followed by the table name which they reference. You need to be able to uniquely identify each row in each table, so each table requires a primary key. Other tables referencing this should always be given a foreign key. For example, primary key ID begint. I always define the first column in every table as the primary key. And this is always called ID and is always a big int data type. The primary key should not be part of the business domain. Not a customer number, national insurance number or similar. And don't use something as a primary key just because it's unique. Even the most unique of numbers and or strings in any business system can change. The national insurance number system may change. A member may lose his membership card and need a new membership number. The customer numbering system may have to be altered to adapt to a new financial system. And a composite primary key will almost always lead to problems at some stage as the sequence of the fields concerned must be identical in all reference tables and compound keys will always slow performance. The big in data type is recommended because it's always going to perform better than, for example, a varchar 30. 
Foreign Key Naming Convention, for example, TBL underscore ID. There are various kinds of relationships between data which need to be taken into consideration when defining the constraint. Foreign keys reference primary keys and are essential for establishing relationships between tables and ensuring integrity. For example, our category ID. If I have a category, children's films, and I have a number of products assigned to this category, I can delete the children's films category and the database doesn't worry about the fact that there are a number of DVDs assigned to this category. Using foreign keys, I can avoid this. I'll show you a couple of examples of this a bit later. If we take a look at the product table here, at the category ID field, IB Expert even shows me the data list of the category table. So, if there is a relationship between tables, define it using foreign keys. We've already said that ID should have no visibility. To simplify things, you can generate all IDs from one source using a generator. For example, new customer ID equals one, new order ID equals two, new order line ID equals three, new order line ID equals four, new customer ID equals five, etc. Firebird doesn't care whether each ID is a series of consecutive numbers or not. It only needs a unique ID. The main advantage of generating all IDs from a single source means that the database is already well prepared for replication. I can now connect a second server and combine all the data without any problems. If the generator number for the first database is set at 1 billion and 1, and the second server begins ID generation at, for example, 2 billion and 1. And if you later need to reset your ID numbers to a new value, you only need to alter a single generator value. Create database. You can create a database in ISQL, Firebird and Interbase's command line utility program using the create database command. Using IB Expert, Simply open the database menu and click Create Database, and then work your way through the form. First, choose a location where the file of your database will be stored. It is likely that you will have to discuss this with the administrator of your computer computer network, as you will need to ensure that there is sufficient room to store not just the database, but also the data entered into it. Another consideration is the security of the database location. Data is sensitive. In most situations, you don't want to let just anyone see it. When entering the server name, I can add a slash after the location definition and define a new port. For example, here I have a Firebird 2.1 running on port 3021. As I've got four or five different Firebird versions running on this machine, I define a logical port number for each version. Installing multiple Firebird versions is something we will look at in another session. In the meantime, it's explained comprehensively in our online documentation. Further parameters here include protocol. A tip here is not to use the local protocol unless you are working on a totally isolated standalone machine and are not connected to any network. The local protocol causes particular problems if you're using Vista. Although the introduction of the new local Firebird protocol, XNet, in Firebird 2 has solved many of the former problems of the previous local transport protocol, often referred to as IPC or IP server. If your server is installed locally, use the remote protocol and define access via localhost, which is pretty well always available. The person creating the database needs to be able to log onto the server with his own user and password combination. The person creating the database is the database owner and can work without restriction on all databases created by himself. The SysDBA may do anything to all databases on this server. We recommend the user should not use the SysDBA master key option but his own user password. This way you can ensure that a second user, namely the SysDBA, can access the database when and if necessary. Page size is the specification of the database page size in bytes. Firebirds and interbase databases are saved in blocks. Each of these blocks is called a page. A database page is the smallest administrative unit in the database file. Database administration occurs basically by accessing the hard drive block by block. 
The more data per access fetched by a single database page, the less often it is necessary to load a new page. Page sizes permitted are 1, 2, 4, 8 and 16K. Up to and including Firebird version 1.5, page sizes up to 8K should be used. The current largest page size of 16K should be reserved for Firebird 2 and higher. Since Firebird 2.1, page sizes of 1 and 2K are deprecated as inefficient. The smaller page restriction applies to new databases only. Old ones can be attached to, regardless of their page size. The page size has a certain influence on the database cache available. That means if you define a page size of 16K and you set the database cache to the maximum, about 128,000 pages, then the Firebird server would use 2 GB of memory as cache. This can provide certain performance advantages, but if you do the same with a 1K page, then you would only have 180 megabytes cache. The page size also has an effect on other things, such as maximum index width. Since Firebird 2, fields wider than 80 characters can now be indexed. The smaller the page size, the larger the relative size of overhead, as each data page has a header for Firebird's internal administration, which stores what can be found where on this page. The only disadvantage of large pages is that memory space could be wasted, but considering the price of hard drives today, the advantages outweigh this one disadvantage. SQL Dialect If you don't know what an SQL Dialect is, then please select Dialect 3. Once you've completed the Create Database window, click OK and you will be taken to IB Experts Database Registration. When the database is created, a new file is created on the disk. This file is the storage of the data. Inside, system tables are created and filled automatically. These tables hold the metadata and are used by the database itself and contain auxiliary information. The default character set can be defined here or in the previous Create Database window. A default character set for the whole database ensures that special characters, such as accents and umlauts, are sorted properly. Using the character set None, after running a query with Order By, any special characters appear at the end of the list. When registering the database, you also need to specify which Firebird or Interbase server version you wish to use before registering your new database for work in IB Expert. We'll continue with a brief introduction to database objects, constraints and data types in part two of our tutorial series, Creating Your First Firebird Database, Part Two. Goodbye for now and thank you from all of us at IB Expert.